welcome to a session of How to Soap Your Patient. My name is Chrissy Nguyen and these are my colleagues. Hi, I'm Winserine Mirza. Hi, I'm Bolanchi. And I'm Melissa Anderson. We are on infectious disease rotation at Jackson Memorial with Dr. Gauthier. Today I'll be going over with you on how to soap your patient. And what is soaping? Soaping pretty much is S for subjective, O for objective, A for assessment, and P is for plan. Before you even gather information about your, what the patient tells you, you first have to get their background information, their age, medical record number, and allergy. I have an example here for you, which is AZ, who's a 35-year-old male with MRN of such and such and no known drug allergy. Then you can go into the subjective part of what the patient tells you. And the patient can come in and say, I have a cough and fever for three days and it's getting worse. So in your subjective part of the note, you would write CC, which is chief complaint, cough, fever, times three days. Then ask about social history. What about the patient's social history? Do they smoke? Do they drink alcohol? And family history, does, is it pertinent to the state of what the patient has right now? Is the father with diabetes or anything else? Then you can ask about past medical history that the patient may have. And the patient can state that he may have diabetes and COPD. Also ask for home medications as well. Depending on what the patient states, you need to record down the name, the dose, and the scheduling of the medication. And here we're going into this objective part of the soap. Okay, so for the objective, objective data is data related to the patient's problem, but that can be obtained through either direct physical exam or lab analysis or radiology, etc. And these are data that can be measured either qualitatively or quantitatively. So you would include um, physical exam data, labs, diagnostic tests like urine analysis or imaging. Also cultures, like what type of cultures were done, what were the results, and what did the susceptibility show patient surgical history, and include their current inpatient medications as well as past inpatient medications, which medications were discontinued. Important points about objective is do not include every single lab data or value. Instead, include information relevant to the patient case. So since this is an ID rotation, you should probably include their white blood cell counts, their daily temperatures, if there's a drug level, and also if they're on a renally adjusted drug, then um, what are the renal um, serum creatinine levels, etc. But you probably don't need to include their everyday blood glucose or maybe not include their blood pressure every day. Also very important to include the, all the data and try to, um, in a chronological order, and try to include the date all the time. Next is assessment. Okay, so after collecting all subjective and objective data from the patient, we have an assessment section to put it all together. So this section is solely your clinical judgment based on the, cl um, the clinical condition and any kind of drug-related problems the patient has. Usually this section corresponds to the information from the previous one, subjective and objective, like I had mentioned. And for this section, um, you really want to focus and prioritize the problems from most urgent to the least urgent. Because sometimes a patient will present with many cl um, clinical problems and you really have to focus and narrow down what you will be focusing. So here's an example for assessment section. First thing is to prioritize which is the most important problems. And of course that will be based on severity and importance and usually correspond with the chief complaint of the patient. For this, um, I wrote down, I listed infective endocarditis, bloodstream infection, and constipation as my main problems. So a patient will present, um, come in with uh, increased temperature, and he was found to have a bloodstream infection leading to endocarditis. So for me, endocarditis seemed to be the most important, and there we go, we, um, I listed it as my main problem. And for, the, for every problem that you will list in the assessment, you want to include any kind of um, information that is pertinent to the disease state that you are listing. So for endocarditis, um, you want to report if the patient has done echocardiogram or any kind of blood culture, either if they're positive or negative and for how many days, and any kind of clinical symptoms such as rot spots, clubbing of fingers, and also, you want to you want to include uh, worsening or improvement of the clinical condition. Anything that will help you determine your plan. And next section we have plan. 
So far, we've collected our subjective information, which we have retrieved from the patient, and we've added that to our objective information, which has uh, been collected by measurements, and those have been combined to determine our assessment of what is going on with the patient. For every assessment that is made, you should have a corresponding plan. And listed below is an example. Number one, we decided was the most urgent, infective endocarditis. Our plan is to initiate empiric vancomycin 1 gram IV every 12 hours for a duration to be determined by microbiology results. It is also important to list under the vancomycin uh, parameters that we would want to monitor as well as actions needed to be uh, taken out by the pharmacy including when to draw a vancomycin trough. Also want to note the goal trough and it would be important to list monitoring serum creatinine and also platelets to see if there are any side effects that may form due to the vancomycin. Secondly is the bloodstream infection and it can be as simple as, as per infective endocarditis plan listed above. And thirdly, we have listed the constipation. And this is something that is not an urgent matter, but is something that the ID team may want to keep track of. And we have decided to continue the Senecot S, one tablet by mouth BID as needed for constipation. So some plan tips for you. Be sure to include the drug name, Dose strength formulation, especially in products like amphotericin, where there are different formulations available. I uh, also would like to note the route, frequency, and duration. If the duration of therapy is dependent on clinical result resolution, it is helpful to note markers of the clinical resolution or progression. An example of this is can be stop treatment um, if there are three days without fever, or decreasing purulent discharge or erythema. These clinical markers are not always added to the duration, but if they are appropriate, then it's good to add it in the plan section. In closing, some tips to leave you with for your soap note. Remember to keep it concise and specific to your individual patient. Eliminate excessive information. All disease states are included on the one soap note. References are not necessary, but are good to add and quality is better than quantity. So we'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for um, listening to our little presentation and we hope that you have a great fourth year and best of luck to you.